Hi, I'm James Barfield with your urbancollection.com. Now, remember, this is the uh, channel that is often imitated, but is never duplicated. And the reason for that is because most people won't talk about the things that I talk about here. And today is going to be no exception. So let's get right into it. Now, after 14 years of waiting, it finally happened on this past Saturday. Now, what happened, you might ask? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Kansas African American Affairs Commission, which has been missing in action for 13 years in all of Kansas, finally came to Wichita with a town hall meeting. Okay, you see that? Town hall meeting. Okay. Now, on the back side of this brochure, we see the events, the event flow, they call it. And the event flow calls for, and I'll read this to you, it calls for the introduction of the commissioners. And the uh, commissioners that were present in Wichita was not the entirety of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. After all, there are seven members of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission plus one executive director. So president of Wichita was the executive director, Ms. Stacy Nail, the chairman, Mr. Mark McCormick, and the two Wichita representatives from the Kansas African American Affairs Commission, Mr. Jonathan McRoy and Mrs. Talia Penn. Now, after the introduction, there would be a history of the commission presented by the executive director. Then there would be the statute that governs the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. There would be strategic planning. There would be a comments on current activities. <laughs> that was short lived. Uh, future plans. And then of course a period for question and answers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something to you. This town hall meeting lasted for somewhere in the neighborhood of two hours or shortly after, maybe two hours and 10 minutes, something like that. Now, I'm going to have to tell you, we waited for a very long time for this. And some people had high expectations. Others didn't know what to expect. But I want to tell you. This was a train wreck. Now, why do I say that? Most of the people that left this town hall meeting, and I've talked to several of them, left with no more knowledge of what this Kansas African American Affairs Commission is all about than they had when they walked in the door. Now, let's talk about what happened. First of all, it got off to a very bad story. In the introduction of the commissioners, the newest commissioner who was appointed in June on two occasions did not know who appointed her to the position on two occasions. And it didn't get any better from there. So after the uh, introduction, we had the history of the commission. And as I've said to you before, this commission was signed into law in 1997 by former Governor Bill Graves. When I say signed into law, ma'am, that means, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that means that the statute was created laying out the duties and responsibilities of this commission. And I'm going to get into that shortly. Now, the after the fiasco with the, uh, the latest and the newest commissioner, the executive director said something that many people in the audience were completely baffled by. And I almost fell out of my chair, to be honest with you. This executive director for the Kansas African American Affairs Commission said to the audience, that the state statute
statute was not a law. And she said she did not have to abide by the statute. And she had no intention of doing so. Ladies and gentlemen, there is not a single attorney in the United States that will tell you that state statutes are not laws. And I want to tell you right now, if you've ever received any type of traffic ticket, somewhere on that ticket, ma'am, madam, uh, ladies and gentlemen, somewhere on that ticket, there is a statute number that tells you what law you have violated in the state of Kansas. It's a traffic violation, but it's still governed by statute. Okay, now, Governor Kelly, and this organization works out of the office of Governor Kelly. Governor Kelly's legal, uh, uh, chief legal officer will tell you and told me when asked that indeed the state statute is a law. She went on to say that the state of Kansas is governed by laws and statutes. So for anybody to say that the state statute is not a law, they don't know what they're talking about. But you know what? Let me just tell you something. I can understand her saying that, and I'm going to tell you why. Because the governor herself violated a statute when she hired this woman. Let me tell you what statute 74-9904 says in relation to how executive directors are to be hired. And I'm gonna read it to you. The executive director appointment and their duties. The advisory commission may appoint subject to the approval of the governor an executive director who shall be qualified by education and work experience to, to assume the responsibilities of such office. And it goes on to talk about the duties. The executive director shall be the administrative officer of the advisory commission and shall serve the advisory commission by gathering information disseminating findings of fact and other information, forwarding proposals and evaluations to the governor, the legislature, and various state agencies, carrying out public education programs, conducting hearings and conferences, and performing other duties necessary for the proper operation of the advisory commission. Now, this executive director went on to say, the statute says nothing about town hall meetings. Ladies and gentlemen, it's clear as day. It says right here, I just read it to you. It says, conducting hearings and conferences. Ladies and gentlemen, that's known as town hall meetings by every African-American commission in the country. They all do it. Some of them do it four and five times a year. The state of New Mexico, which has an African-American population half, if that much the size of Kansas, does four to five each and every year, okay? So that statute doesn't mean anything to the governor, so it doesn't mean anything to executive director. She doesn't know that she's violating state law. Now, so then she went on to talk about strategic planning. I'm going to come back to the statute shortly. She went on to talk about strategic planning. And the strategic planning is something that is a work in progress. Okay. They have hired a local so called consultant from Wichita to help them in strategic planning. All right. After having turned down an expert in Kansas African American Affairs commissions, they hired a local Wichita consultant with no background 
in African American affairs. Okay. Now then they went on to talk about current activities. And the only thing they could talk about there was there are plans in the works for a study on the status of African Americans in Kansas. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have to confess here. I was a member of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission for seven years. And Mildred Edwards was the executive director for five of those years. Mildred Edwards did two or three studies, two years or three years on the status of African Americans in the state of Kansas. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need a study for that. We know what the status of Kansas African American affairs uh, of African Americans in the state of Kansas is in 2021 and 2022. It's the same as it was in 2018, in 2019, in 2020. What we need is to find, and that's what you're charged with, is finding solutions to improve the status of African Americans in the state of Kansas. Okay? So then after that, they talked about future plans, okay? Those were very, very limited, okay? And then of course we had questions and answers. Now, before I get to questions and answers, I'm gonna go back to statute 74-9905, okay? And this lists the duties and responsibilities and functions of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. And I want you to know, I'm, on, I'm not going to read all of them, but I would advise you to get yourself a copy, go online and, and, and get yourself a copy of Kansas State Statute 74-9901 through 74-9906. But right now I want to address 74-9905, the duties and responsibilities. And I want to go down to one. There are several, there are about 10 of them on here, but I'm gonna to go to this one because I think this one's very important. And this one is 74-9905B. Uh, 74-9905B. And here's what it says. The duties and responsibilities of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission is to coordinate, assist, and cooperate with the efforts of state departments and agencies to serve the needs of African Americans, especially in the areas of culture, education, um, employment, health, housing, welfare, and recreation. All right? Now, needless to say, the executive director in talking about their strategic planning, talking about what they have done, what they're going to do, none of this was mentioned. You know why? Because they've done nothing in the areas of culture, education, employment, health, housing, welfare, and recreation. Now, as a matter of fact, I have to tell you something. Now we go down to the questions and answers. One lady, one female lady there in the audience asked, who are your education uh, commissioners? The executive director responded, well, we have two. One is the superintendent of public schools in Lawrence. And one is a former school principal who now is an employee of the Shawnee County uh, School Board, both on our commission. And yet, they cannot tell you one thing they have done to in effect and advance and enhance our young black students in any public school district in the state of Kansas. Now, one thing, and you've got two, I assume, very knowledgeable school people.
people on your board and you've done nothing about education in 12 years. You've done nothing about employment, improving the employment climate. You've done nothing to secure any jobs for African Americans in any city in the state of Kansas. You've done nothing about health conditions, and yet we have black people every single day dying from diabetes, from cancer, from heart disease, you name it, and you've done nothing, okay? And the same goals for housing, welfare, recreation, and economic development. Now, speaking of that latter, another young lady asked, what are you doing to get African-American companies to relocate to Kansas, bring jobs, and then hire people? What are you doing about economic development? Well, I mean, nothing to answer. No answer. Ladies and gentlemen, now I've told you this is my third podcast on the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. And each time, it seems to get worse. Now, I'm going to go back to the hiring of this young lady. This young lady and the governor and the chief of staff violated statute 74-9904. And I'm going to tell you how and why. First of all, when there is an opening in the executive director position, the job is supposed to be advertised. You're supposed to solicit resumes from interested parties, conduct interviews, and that is not done by the governor, nor is it done by the chief of staff. That is done and performed by the commissioners. Now, how do I know that? Because I myself was involved in the uh, replacement of two executive directors during my seven years. Now, to prove it, ladies and gentlemen, I have here, and I want you to see this, I have here two resumes. Can you read that? Resumes. Two resumes. Now, I won't show, I don't want to show the names, but here's another one. Here's another one right here. Okay, I want you to see this. Here's another one. And I want you all to understand. I'm trying to protect the names here, but even because I don't have the permission of these people to share their names, even though this gentleman here, he's responded to one of my other podcasts and he's made it known that he applied. But this is the process for replacing a, uh, 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 an executive director and filling the executive director position. Now, you go through the process of the commissioners gathering resumes and conducting interviews. At the conclusion of the uh, interview process, the commissioners then forward to the governor two to three names of people they feel would be best suited to lead this organization. Governor Kelly, did not do that. It, the, the position was never advertised. There was no resumes ever uh, submitted. The commissioners never did any interviews. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor made a political appointment. Okay? Now, we have no way of knowing what type of person, what type of person that might have the correct qualifications, might have met the requirements by education and work experience that could have led this organization in a proper manner. But the governor violated her own state statute. And here we have a train wreck, okay? We have a train wreck. Now, another question was asked. 
Why is it that this governor for three years has had a budget surplus of $1.6 billion or more, while at the same time, the Kansas African American Affairs Commission is operating on a budget that was set in 1997 of $250,000. I asked each and every one of you, would you work for the same money today that you worked for in 1997? Can you go to the grocery store today with the paycheck that you received in 1997 and walk out of there with enough groceries to feed your family? I think not. I think not. So the governor basically showing how much concern she has for the quality of life or improving the quality of life for African Americans in the state of Kansas. She has none. She's not allocated one single dime out of a $1.5 billion surplus to help and support and bring enough uh, personnel and introduce programs to enhance the performance of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. Not one dime, but she's giving money to everybody else out there that's asked for it, some that didn't ask for it. If you recall, she's offering to pay, send $250,000 right now to any Kansas taxpayer that files for the $250,000. Ladies and gentlemen, you must understand. Now, I want to tell you, there are a lot of people, and I'm beginning, I'm beginning to get there, but there are a lot of people that are saying that this governor, through her actions, are showing racist, bigoted actions toward African Americans. Hey, I'm just calling them like I said. I'm just telling you what's going on. This governor knows full well that you cannot run a statewide organization in 2022 effectively and officially for $250,000. It just doesn't happen. There is not another African American Affairs Commission run through the governor's office today that runs on $250,000. Not statewide, they don't, <laughs> they just don't do it. And this governor can't say she doesn't have the funds and she doesn't have to go through the uh, legislator. She could do it on her own, okay? So, you know, uh, now let's move on. Now we get to the uh, other questions and answers, ladies and gentlemen. They were unprepared. Oh, and I have to tell you this. When she made the comment about state statutes are not the law, it was surprising to me that none of the other commissioners that were present, including the chair who worked for the ACLU. <laughs> Can you believe that? None of them rose to say, hey, look, sorry, I, I have to kind of disagree with that statement. Because everybody in the audience knows that's not true. I mean, this exposes, and I hate to say this, but this exposes the incompetency of the executive director. This shows what you get when the governor and her chief of staff violate the policies because they think they know what's best for us and they have no idea. They have no idea, they don't have a clue, and it's been proven. They've done nothing for the four years that Governor Kelly has been in office. As I said, this is the first town hall meeting in 14 years. We've not had an annual report in 14 years. 
We don't get any weekly reports for the last 12 years. And the executive director says she has no plans. No plans for an annual report. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm just laying it out there, telling you what happened. We waited a very long time for this, and we got nothing to show for it, basically. And that's like everything else that they do. Now, I've talked to some people, and they said, you know, after going to that meeting, I still have no idea what they do. And I say, there's a very good reason for that. <laughs> and they say, well, I'm going to go to the website and see if I can find more information. And I say, I have at it. And while you're there, look up state statute 74 9901. 9902, 9903, 9904, and 9905 in particular, because those are the statutes that are being completely violated, ignored by this commission. Now, this commission is made up of seven adults. We're not talking about children. We're not talking about juveniles. We're talking about adults that should know the statute and what it stands for. Now, in addition to that, I want to read to you the, uh, I want to read to you their, uh, their bylaws, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to tell you this, when you go to the website, you hope to find lots of information. And in and included in that information, you hope to find when do these people meet? Now, you won't find it on their website. You won't find it anywhere. But there again, they're in violation of their own bylaws. Now, let me read you the bylaws regarding to meetings. And this you'll find in Article 8, entitled Meetings, in the Section 8-1. And here's how it reads. The commission shall meet four time, at least four times per fiscal year. Commissioners shall designate a regular meeting date and publish the dates for each year in advance of the start of the fiscal year. Did you hear what I said? Publish one year's meeting dates in advance. They should be on that website. And yet you won't find one. They cannot agree on meeting dates from quarter to quarter. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, this is not good enough. It is time for all of us to call or write letters to the governor's office and to the chief of staff and say, this is not working. This is not working for us African-Americans in the state of Kansas. We are receiving no benefits from this organization, even though our tax dollars are funding this organization. We should say there is no impact on African Americans from the Kansas African American Commission. No impact. And the reason for that, ladies and gentlemen, because 80% of the African Americans in the state of Kansas has never heard of this group. So how can you have an impact when you don't do any town hall meetings, you don't do any outreach, you do nothing to connect with the African Americans throughout the state, how can you have an impact? You talk about you have a YouTube page, you talk about your lunch and learn project. You've done about eight of them now about eight of those, and four of them have had zero views in four months, four, four weeks' time. Zero views. And seven of them, seven of them have fewer than 10 views in anywhere from two weeks to two months. That is not working. That is not working. 
and you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. Will Lawrence, Laura Kelly, we can do better than this. We can't do much worse, but we can do better than this. You've been told that basically you don't know how to run an African American Affairs Commission. As a matter of fact, your former, I guess now, when I'm told he's a former, Secretary of Appointments, who was charged with overseeing the African American Affairs Commission, said to me personally, he doesn't know what to do. His exact words, what the hell do I know? I'm just a 50 year old white boy. Well, if you don't know what to do, then hire somebody that does know what to do. It's as simple as that. The governor won't admit it, but she doesn't know what to do. The chief of staff won't admit it, but he doesn't know what to do. It's all run now by trial and error. You go out there and you hire somebody because they're black and you put them in a place as executive director with no experience, don't meet the educational or nor work experience qualifications, and expect miracles. It's not working. It has not worked. It will not work. When you will you wake up? When it's too late? Ladies and gentlemen, the governor's as you all know, is Laura Kelly. The chief of staff is Will Lawrence. You will find both of them in Topeka. And if you need to know how to get in touch, I will provide you the answer. We cannot continue to allow them to misuse and abuse us because of the color of our skin. I will dare to say to you right now, there's not another organization in the governor's office or even in the entire uh, government uh, community there that has not had an increase in their operating budget since 1997, I guarantee it. But yet, it is the feeling of the governor and apparently Will Lawrence that they're black. We don't care if they fail or succeed, but we don't have any money for them. $250,000 with one employee to run a statewide organization. And then you're paying that one employee $75,000. Subtract that from $250,000. What do you have left for an entire state of Kansas with over 162,000 black residents? The town hall meeting, I hope they don't have another one unless they're much, much better prepared than what they were for this one in Wichita. Okay, after waiting 14 years, it wasn't worth the wait. I'm James Barfield.